Hey, what's up guys? It's Eli Knight here, and I'm here with my man Aaron Hollander. We're up here at Krav Oz in, this is Germantown, Germantown right? Maryland. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this place is amazing. This amazing facility. I was lucky enough to come up here and do a seminar this weekend. We did some uh, escapes and attacks from bottom side control. We've been messing with all kinds of stuff, lots of jiu-jitsu this weekend. And uh, these guys are amazing up here. If you get a chance to, get to come and train with them, uh, it's, it's Krav Maga, jiu-jitsu, and everything here. So. Uh, we were talking about different topics, and um, Chantelle is behind the camera. She was talking about mounted triangle stuff, so I thought I'd make a quick video about getting to the mounted triangle, some interesting entries for it, how to finish it, um, all that kind of stuff. So the first way that I like to look at doing it is from uh, side control, actually, setting it up. Um, so when we're here like this, if I'm going to set up my uh, mounted triangle, then uh, what I first want to do is like he's got these frames in the way. If I'm in a kind of a standard side control, he's typically going to be framing in my neck and framing in my hip. So I want to kill this near side frame first. A good way to do that is to take my knee down to his hip like this. So I'm crossing down and I'm going to scrape up his body and that's going to shave right underneath that arm. So now I've cut that arm away so he doesn't have that frame any longer. So now that that frame's out of the question here, now uh, from this posi position, I want to make some pressure so that he's actually having to frame harder because once he starts framing harder, now I can reach up and I'm going to shove this down. Once I shove this down into his diaphragm here like this, and I've got this arm cut away, I'm going to uh, cup and scoop his head this way. The purpose of this is to keep his head and his arm isolated but also is to keep a little bit of like distance underneath his head between his head and the mat because the next step is going to be about me throwing this leg here over this direction. Now I want to make one quick motion over so I clear the arm and then I make this uh, this journey over here. Usually my foot's going to land around where my knee is and because of where my arm was and how where his arm was I've picked this his head up and I've made the space to be able to connect my triangle underneath his head. So I'm gonna keep his head up. Now I'm gonna lean this direction and put my weight and then I'm gonna start crossing my ankles. The cross of the ankles isn't the most important thing because I don't wanna sit on his chest. Instead, I wanna cross and I wanna keep my shins on rails perpendicular to or parallel to each other. And I want the, the weight to go here as I squeeze and close that space in. So what's happening with my two legs is when I get to this position, I'm putting them parallel to each other, shins parallel, and I'm closing the space there. So I might have to walk out a little bit to be able to finish and close that space up the right way. So one more time on this one here, whenever we get to this position, Again, I want to isolate this near side arm so that it's not an obstacle in my way because that's where he's going to create space that will shut down my triangle. And now I'm going to go here, I'm going to frame, and then I'm going to come in, I'm going to press this hand down to his stomach or his abdomen here like this. I guess that's the same thing, diaphragm or abdomen. So whenever we get here, I'm going to keep his head craned up like this. I want to kick up over all the way, shoot all the way through this way. I want to cross the two ankles. That should help pass his arm because now my hip is in place. I want to turn the knees the same direction. I'm going to walk it out this way here and create the pressure for that mounted triangle. So that's one uh, really kind of interesting, sneaky kind of way to throw that mounted triangle. A lot of the time when you're isolating that arm, people think about the side control, about escaping that, about making extra space, replacing guard. They're not thinking mounted triangle from that kind of side control. So that's what a really good place to hit it. Another place to hit it is from... Um, this uh, mount right here from the chopping block. So the chopping block essentially is whenever I get underneath his head from the mount and I'm gonna start walking up because a lot of times he'll have his frames inside. I'm gonna scoop underneath his wrist. I'm gonna crawl, crawl, crawl like this. I'm saving the space with my hand here sometimes. As I crawl, I drive with my chest. I crawl more, I drive with my chest, crawl more. And I keep that process going until I get up here and I can isolate his head. Now at this position, a lot of times the most common thing that you're gonna look at is maybe I can attack his arm for a bent arm or a straight arm, or maybe I can go for a uh, uh, head and arm choke or an arm triangle. But instead of that here, what I wanna look to do is I wanna hike my knees up. So I'm riding up higher into the mount. I'm trying to get up into his armpits. And then from here, this is the trick that really helps to keep this uh, funneled up. From here, instead of my bent arms, I'm gonna start locking my arms straight. So I'm going from here to here and I'm bringing my biceps together. What that does is it funnels a lot of that stuff up right here. Now I can start sliding this knee up and then we're back kind of in the same position that we were a while ago where I'm gonna cradle his head. I wanna make sure that this arm is clear and then I wanna step over and across. And so at this point here now, I can start to uh, isolate the, the head and the arm. I wanna again, get my shins on rails and then we're back into that, that mounted triangle position. If for some reason your position sucks, I've got too much weight on his chest or he's just got gills, I'm not getting the choke somehow, you always have this arm lock accessible here like that too. Um, so you know, keep in mind that you can combo your attacks to make everything a lot more effective. Now, um, 
One other way that we can look to get this from the mount as well is whenever we're in this mounted position. And um, if from here, I can start to isolate an arm out. So a lot of times what, what he'll read in this position is that I wanna start isolating this arm in a way that he, he's gonna read Americana. He's worried about this bent arm lock, this double wrist lock, this shoulder lock, whatever it is. At that point here, if while he's concerned about this one, I've been able to ride my knee up higher and again, isolate the arm on this side over here where I get my knee and my elbow together like that. If this is the case, then now I've got this spread out. So while he's worried about this, he can't reach over and protect that arm, but I also can't finish the bent arm lock uh, on that side. So a way that I can look to do this now, rather than lifting and shooting through, because once I let off this arm, a lot of the time he'll bring that arm back in and I'm gonna miss the triangle that way. So instead what I can look to do from here is step on his bicep. Once I step on his bicep this way here, now I pick his head up, now I can shoot back through. And we've again, isolated the head and the arm, I turn, Shins are on rails, knees are facing the same direction, arm triangle. One more time on this one, what this looks like is we get here and I've been able to isolate this arm here. Sometimes what uh, gives me the access to be able to get my knee and my elbow together on this side on uh, over here is the fact that he is thinking about trying to reach across and, and protect his arm. So if he's doing that, he may try to reach across between our bodies. He's gonna see that's not happening. Sometimes he'll go and he'll hug my body like this. If that's what's the case, then I'm gonna bring that knee and the elbow together to save that space that he created. So now, uh, since I've still got this arm isolated, again, I don't personally like to try to kick all the way through because either flexibility or speed or whatever. So instead what I like to do is I wanna step over on his arm, try to get on his bicep or at least on his elbow. And then I'm gonna pick up from here, shoot through. And then there's my mounted triangle right there. So um, again, these are a few different interesting kind of entries into the mounted triangle. Uh, a lot of the time that people don't see the mounted triangle coming because there's other things that typically get prioritized over that mounted triangle. Like I said before, um, he's thinking either I'm trying to set up a head and arm choke or an arm bar or a bent arm lock. So he's kind of sleeping on the fact that, that that triangle is right around the corner. And so these might be some sneaky, interesting strategies to be able to implement from side control or mount. Uh, if you like these, then let me know about it in the comment section. If I miss something, let me know about it. Be nice to me in the comment section or don't, whatever. Um, and anytime that you're up in the Germantown area, then come here train at Krav Oz with Aaron and Chantel. And these guys are amazing. So thank you again for having me up, brother. Appreciate, Appreciate you. And like, subscribe, share, do all that stuff, guys. Thanks a lot. Thank you.